What is up YouTube welcome back to Bike Hub Japan. So today I'm not on my usual bike as you can see I'm on a BMW R18 Classic. So let's take it for a spin. So this old girl has got a keyless ignition so I've got the key in my pocket. You've got to turn the ignition on here and then just fire her up. Jesus boy. The engine twist on it is quite amazing. So, in case you don't know anything about these bikes, it is an 1800cc twin cylinder boxer engine. So one of those bad boys is 900cc, which is quite amazing. So it has about 91 horsepower and about 116 foot-pounds of torque. So to put that into perspective, my GSX-R has about 80 foot-pounds of torque. So this thing is a torque monster. And I've literally only ridden it for about five minutes, so I'm still getting used to it. But um, the shifter is, is surprisingly small, I can't get my feet into it, so I'm having a bit of trouble with the old shifting. So I'm not even going to try and get into neutral. But uh, yeah, so far I've got to say she is a beast. Weight as well, it's uh, 365 kilos, so it's quite a heavy old girl. And the shaking is quite surprisingly strong. I can feel it in the bars. And you just touch you just touch the throttle and you can sort of feel the the twisting because it's a boxer engine and a shaft drive it's uh yeah it's quite a strange feeling all right so this bike has got three power modes you got rock god i can't shift you got rock you got roll and you've got rain so i'm in rock now as you can see there so that's the most hardcore one apparently um so roll is just your general like normal power mode and rain obviously is for when you're riding in the rain so to change that it's quite simple you just apparently just press mode while you're in neutral and idling and you can just change it and that's it so we'll leave it in rock anyway oh where's the shifter it's uh, very um it's hard to tell that you've got into gear it doesn't like clunk or anything like my bike it's really freaking obvious that you've just changed gear because it'll go clunk but this thing is actually very civilized the gearbox is anyway one thing i've noticed straight away is there is way more um wind on my head than there is on my jigsaw obviously because this doesn't have a proper fairing it's just got this little mini screen which isn't removable apparently so the guy told me um yeah, if you want to get rid of the screen, you should probably buy the, a different model, the base model, because um, that screen doesn't come off very easily. But uh, yeah, it's uh, very comfortable anyway. Now, one thing uh, I've noticed just in riding around town as well is the brakes are a little bit, they, they're a bit left, a bit left, little, what do you say, left to be desired. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, now, it has... It's quite unusual, it's got twin 300mm discs on the front, but it's also got 300mm disc on the rear, just a single one obviously, um, which is sort of unusual I would have thought. Not many bikes have got as big discs on the back as they do on the front. But why can't I get into neutral? I'm finding this really tricky. There we go. Yeah, so yeah, it does have ABS, and you would think with massive 300 mil twin discs on the front, it'd be really good at braking. But yeah, it's a bit, a bit lackluster if you ask me. Um, now, apparently, well, I'm only using two fingers, so I'm being kind of gentle. But I guess if you jump on them, it might actually stop. But uh, yeah, I'm using the rear brake quite a lot, which may be a cruiser thing because I found that on my mate's um, Vulcan as well. That using the front was pretty useless <laughs> most of the braking power came from the rear okay i'm getting used to this shifter now let's try a bit of a brake test shall we 60 kilometers an hour okay yeah i guess i just wasn't being uh, aggressive enough so this one being the classic um it's got a 16 inch front wheel um whereas the other ones come with 19 so this one's got more of a kind of a a bobber style to it but because the tires are quite fat on them the uh, overall rake and trail is the same as all the other r18 models so that's quite interesting now i've got heated grips on this one now, if you look at the screen you'll see the heated grip sign appear and then you've got three two one so i had it i have it on one because three was just way too hot 
the airshift there, boy. Let's go and cruise into this uh, indoor covered market that we've got here in Nagoya. Show you some sights and sounds of Japan. It's actually, I'm finding it to be a bit physical, you know, riding around town anyway. It's quite physical because it is a heavy bike. So when you stop, there's a lot of weight that wants to move around underneath you. So I'm finding, yeah, I don't know why, but I'm a bit short of breath, which is unusual for me riding a bike. This is actually a bit more strenuous than riding my Jixer is on the mountains, funnily enough, surprisingly enough. Right, now what else can I tell you about the, um, the town riding? The clutch is very, very light, which is nice. It's super duper light. So it's a hydraulic clutch, uh, but yeah, it, it takes absolutely no effort. Because I'm having trouble finding neutral because my feet are a bit too big for the, um, the shifter on this. I guess it's been set up for Japanese size feet. Um, I'm just leaving it in first gear the whole time when I stop rather than putting it into neutral. And uh, yeah, it's a piece of piss really with this light ass clutch. Oh, come on, you knobhead. You'd think it, on a bike review video I'd be able to not swear, but apparently I can't do that. I'm incapable of not swearing. Yeah, cruising around like this, I don't know, well, I'm at 1900 RPM because the taco is digital on this because all it's got is a big speedometer and, the, and that, um, that little dash that you can see there. So that's something as well you can turn off, you can look at other data like the temperatures or the, uh, the voltmeter and stuff like that. But the uh, guy at the dealership put it on the, a tachometer for me so I could see what, I'm, see what revs I'm doing. Um, yeah, so electronics wise, the uh, dash itself is quite minimal but it does have the full kind of you know the electronics package that you need sort of it's got ABS um, it's got heated grips it's got different modes different power modes and stuff like that so yeah I'd say it's gonna be a pretty sensible bike despite it being a big massive 1800 cc boxer twin but it's uh, yeah I think maybe someone who is new to riding as well could get on one of these it's not overwhelming in any way and the power you know around town it's kind of hard to judge when i'm just using like first and second gear the whole time let's try and get in neutral again because this is taking a while no that's first no okay got into neutral so that's interesting too when you get into neutral the um the idle drops quite a lot when i'm in gear it's idling at about 1150 and as soon as you put it into neutral it goes to like 900 to 950 so i guess it's uh, some kind of engine mapping setting in there to save fuel when you're idle uh, it's quite good but yeah i feel i feel like it's not an overwhelming bike considering it's such a big one um i reckon yeah this could be a a nice introductory bike for someone who's after a massive cruiser because yeah like i say i'm not scared of it despite it having 116 foot pounds of torque you think i would be but yeah obviously that mass that weight of the thing probably is going to come into uh come into it there with 365 kilos wet so she's not a light girl but yeah it doesn't feel doesn't feel scary at all really i'm trying to find somewhere where we've got a bit of an opening in the traffic so we can actually open this open this old girl up a bit I'm having to tiptoe to change gear. So I'm not sure if that is something that big riders need to take into account. This might be because this is a Japanese bike and they may have adjusted the, um, the shifter to suit Japanese sized feet, I really don't know. But yeah, I'm having to literally tiptoe like this to uh, step on the shifter. I don't know if you can see that well enough. But yeah, it's sort of pretty uncomfortable for me to do that. So not particularly enjoying that but uh, yeah like i said that could be just a, a country specific thing a japanese specific uh change that they've made but yeah check that out yourself if you're going to uh, test ride well make sure your your feet actually fit oh man i chose the test ride at this time of day because i thought there would be no traffic and yeah i was totally wrong fucking hell out the way fuckers I don't feel confident enough on it yet to go zipping through the traffic because I'm not really used to the bike yet. Yeah, out the way. Should we try a little lane split, shall we? Fuck it, let's try it. Let's try it. Now this one has got 
uh, panniers fitted, side bags, whatever you want to call them. And um, because of that, the Classic has a different muffler to the other bikes. So the other ones have got like those uh, slash cut exhausts, but because of the bags on this, it doesn't. So yeah, styling wise as well, the muffler looks a little bit less cool on this than on the other models of the R18s, but I don't mind. All right, can I go? Let's check out this torque. Oi, cunt! Fucking hell. Interesting noise as well. It's not like anything I've ever ridden before. And I have ridden some BMWs with the old Boxer Twins, but it sounds very different. I would love to know what the red line is. I've literally got no idea. Oh, I really can't get into... Oh, there we go. We're into neutral. All right, guys. So I'm just trying it now in the roll mode, which is the basic mode, the uh, the sort of in between the max power mode and the rain mode. So just what he, the guy, the dealer called it, the normal mode. I just want to see what a difference this makes. I can definitely feel it in the throttle straight away. It's uh, much slower to respond. Um, I don't know if it affects the actual power output as well, but we'll soon find out in a minute once we get onto a straight. Now apparently as well when you're in the uh, rock mode it changes the traction control setting as well so it allows a little bit more slip but um, yeah slip is not something that we want today not today we'll save that sort of thing for another day oh yeah totally different totally different the roll mode is so 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 subtle so weak <laughs> weak is that the biggest word to use it's probably a bit unfair but yeah you, you can feel the difference immediately as soon as you give it a bit of throttle oh my god like totally different uh, god knows what rain mode is like because roll mode is lame wow wasn't expecting such a big difference but uh yeah now we're on a nice straight road as well i want to be in rock i want to be in rock mode not roll mode I don't know if you guys can tell when I change gear, but you can see a bit of um, sideways motion from that boxer engine. It's the first few times it happens, it's a little bit off-putting, off but I think that's sort of part of the charm of um, you know having a boxer that the engine kind of feels alive, sort of thing. But yeah, I found it a bit a bit odd at first. Like I'll try and simulate now. So you go for it. I didn't really do it that time, but. Yeah, you, you can kind of get a bit of a wobble on the handlebars when you um, when you change gear. Alrighty. Alright, let's get somewhere where we can... Alright, I'm coming through, boys. Yeah. I'm coming through, boy. Alright, let's put it back into uh, rock mode if we can get into fucking neutral. Yes. Roll, rock. Okay. All right, back into rock mode. All right, let's go for a spin down by the river and then return this bike to the uh, dealership. Ah, oh, yeah, immediate, immediate difference in that in those power modes. Even at like ridiculously slow speeds like this, like 10 kilometers an hour, you can feel the difference. It's quite amazing, really. So I guess maybe if you were uh, a bit intimidate, intimidated by this bike when you first bought it, you could uh, just leave it in the roll mode for a little while until you get used to it, and then um, progress up to the rock mode. Oh, that car in front's got a Nürburgring sticker. Legend. All right, so. I'm going to give you my final final thoughts on this uh, this bike. Um, I've been riding it around for about half an hour now, and uh, I feel like I'm taking the piss a little bit with how long I borrowed it for. So I'm heading back to the uh, dealer. Uh, one of the things that I love about the bike is the torque. It's really torquey, really fun, but it does seem like it runs out of revs a bit too quick. Um, and one of the other th the things that I haven't liked about this bike is the suspension. 
Uh, around here it's kind of a bumpy road it's not a very nice nice condition road but it's quite quite bumpy um, now the front suspension is not adjustable the rear I thought it was a hardtail but it does actually have a shock in there but I'm guessing that's not adjustable either so that's a bit of a down point not having any adjustability on the suspension um, so yeah I have found that going over bumps like on the, there's a lot of bridges around here and really shitty shitty tarmac um, it's yeah it's a little bit a little bit harsh on my old bum bum get into gear you motherfucker and the last thing is the gears I really hate the gear shifter uh, but obviously that's not a, um, a manufacturing thing that's ju more just it needs to be adjusted to my size 12s um, so yeah can't blame the bike for that but good things I do like um, all the electronics and stuff it's quite amazing what a difference a mode makes what a difference mode makes three little buttons yeah so rain mode i didn't try but i tried the rock and the roll mode and the roll mode is very very gentle and the rock mode is quite hardcore i would say you get the the full amount of power that you can from the bike and uh it's quite good fun now yeah, the only other negative thing I had about the bike is there is a bit of a rattle from the front which I'm thinking is something to do with this screen or the um, the LED little fog lamps, little side lights there. Yeah at certain RPMs there is a quite an obvious rattle noise um, which you would think for a bike that costs like what 20, 23,000 US dollars or whatever you'd think that there wouldn't be anything like that. Um, so yeah that was a bit disappointing. Um, otherwise comfort comfort when you're on a nice nice road that isn't so bumpy very comfortable i think you could ride this for hours and hours and hours without any trouble especially on the highway i think it'd be freaking awesome on the highway despite the fact that it's got quite a lot of wind noise but uh yeah what can you expect from a bike of this category so overall i liked it i had fun riding it but not a chance in hell i'd buy one but uh, for you guys who are thinking of getting a cruiser bike like this, well, I hope my silly little review helped you out a little. And now I shall return back to BMW Motorrad Nagoya and give them their big old cruiser back. All right, guys, this was Bike Hub Japan. If you like the video, make sure to send me a, uh, a comment, like the video, and if you will, please do subscribe. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video. Ciao. Uh,